Hey Miles here at Tactical Hive and welcome to this week's dry fire and live fire session. We're going to continue working on multiple target engagements or also called target transitions. And we already covered some key points in the previous two weeks and now we're going to add to that. We are going to take these baby steps though, okay? So I'm not going to overwhelm you, maybe one to two things per video. And in this video, we are going to address undershooting your target or overshooting your target. So if you're interested, make sure to stay tuned and watch this video. All right, welcome back. So for this dry fire session, just like the previous ones, it will be helpful if you have a shot timer like the Shooters Global Smart Timer to track dry fire shots and a dry fire mag. If you don't have it, it's not the end of the world, but it just makes things a little bit easier and uh, more effective. So what we're going to be doing is using these two plate racks. You don't need to use this at all. In dry fire, you can have, even in live fire, you can just have, you know, pick different things in your home, put pasters somewhere, whatever, shoot light switches, okay? And then at the range, you can just use, even if you're at a single lane, you could just put two targets on one card piece of cardboard, okay? So don't worry too, too much about that. Just focus on the techniques, concept, principles that you're learning in the video and apply it to whatever setup that you, you possibly can have for your own training. So we're gonna switch the camera angle here. I'm gonna talk about things. We're gonna add on to what we've already discussed with multiple target engagements. So we have two six plate racks downrange, about seven yards for the dry fire and the live fire session. It again, doesn't matter what target array you're using. I'm going to, for the instructional segment here, just focus on the first two inner plates here. So we already talked about leading with your eyes, resetting and prepping before you get to the next target so you're ready to shoot. And now what we want to do is address undershooting and overshooting. Okay, what I mean by undershooting is if I start on one target here on the left and I, chart, I start to transition, I undershoot it, meaning I end up a little bit before that second plate, my red dot is there, and what's going to happen is I'm gonna to have to micro adjust, taking some time to land that second shot, or to get on top of the second target and break that shot. So it'd be something like this, you know, I break that shot, I transition, whoops, I'm, I undershot, I have to move again, and then break the shot, so that adds time, okay? And the idea here is the same thing can happen if you overshoot. You're going to have to correct because you overshot the target. You're going to have to come back, then break the shot. So that takes time. The way to avoid that, first, we've already addressed one of the key things. You have to lead with your eyes. A lot of people, especially beginners and intermediate shooters, when they undershoot or overshoot, it's because they did not lead with their eyes, and they're not actually looking at a small spot. They're looking at this big target, this big mass here, and not a small point. So if you don't know where you're going, if you're leading with your eyes and you don't know where you're going, then your gun is just gonna go wild. It'll either undershoot or overshoot. So the first thing you really need to heed, pay attention to that first thing we talked about, lead with your eyes and lock into a spot. Okay, as simple as that as it sounds, it's very difficult for people. So the very first thing we're going to do here is you're gonna break a shot, you're going to lead with your eyes, right? I'm gonna exaggerate and moving my head so you know. I don't know if you can see my eyes through, you know, it's sunny right now, so the lenses might be dark right now. So you break the shot, you lead with your eyes. I'm moving my head just a little bit just so you can see, but remember from the first video with multiple target engagements, we just lead with our eyes. We don't move our head and then our head will follow. So I'm here, I'm looking at my next target, I've locked into a small spot. So that's the first thing. Lock into a small spot and then begin your transition. We'll talk about the body and all that later on. We're just working on these simple mechanics here. So start with your eyes, lock in, and then move your dot to where you locked in. Okay, that's very important, okay? Wherever you locked in, your dot will go because you're gonna guide your dot there. The second thing is very important. It is the 90-10 principle or the 80-20, depending on you know schools of thought. The whole idea here is you don't wanna go 100% to the finish line, all right? Meaning I don't wanna try and have my dot on the first plate and move 100% speed 100% of the time and try to get it perfect on the second target. The chances of you undershooting or overshooting are much, much higher if you do that. So. What you wanna do instead is before you get to your second target or your final target, if you're doing a, a two target transition, is when you're about 10 or 20% of the way, 
you begin to let your foot off the gas and let your sights or red dot just glide into the next target. So I'm gonna exaggerate this. This is what going 100% and trying to break at the very end looks like. You're gonna hear on this first target, I break the shot. I'm going to now look at the next target. I'm gonna transition and then my gun is shaking over there at the end. So it's gonna be hard for me to break that next shot. Instead, what I wanna do is I'm gonna use the two furthest plates so that you can see the movement a little bit better. I'm gonna start here. So I am going to, once I get to the second to the last plate at the end over here, you're gonna see me, I'm going to take my foot off the gas and I'm just gonna glide to the next plate. So I'm here, okay, I'm gonna do this one wrong first. I overshot it, I have to come back. And notice how it was, it was really, it was a sharp break. It's like I put the handbrake at the end. Instead, once I get to the second last target, I'm gonna glide in. See how I just glide in, and now I'm literally right at that second target, right in the center, right where my eyes were. So the two lessons for the dry fire session and the live fire session, I'm gonna show you the exercises to do for dry fire, is you must really lock into a small spot because that is where you are going to lead your red dot or your sights. The next thing is before you get to your final target, you need to let up on the gas. You are not putting on the brakes. You're just taking your foot off the gas and gliding to that next target, right? Do not try and connect the dots perfectly because then the chances of undershooting or, or, or uh, overshooting are higher. So now what you're going to be doing is you would do the same things we did in the previous weeks. You're gonna use a shot timer and first start with one shot and then transition to the next target without breaking a shot. So it'd be something like this here. Okay, I'm right there. I landed right where I wanted to be, perfect, okay? And I was ready to take the shot if I needed to. I'm just following the previous week's lesson, the reset and prep, ready to take another shot. And I'm using my timer to register the shot, okay? And that's for your reference. Now, after you do that a number of times and you are already very comfortable, you're not overshooting or undershooting your target, that's when you progress to the next thing. So now I'm gonna take two shots here. Okay, that one I overshot a little bit. And why? It's because, you know, I lost my focus. I actually did not look at the next target. Maybe it's just because I'm thinking, oh, you know what, I'm just creating this video. But I lost focus there, so I'm gonna do that one again. Okay. That one was perfect, okay? I didn't have uh, my dry fire mag inserted properly, so I didn't get that next uh, shot, but that was perfect. I'm gonna do that one more time. Perfect, okay? So that one, I got my time there, everything looks good, so that was a two, four, one. So I'm very happy with that, okay? Actually, let me see if that was the correct time there. So that was a actually a 115. So it was a 115, and that is the time, that's my baseline. So then I'm gonna do the same exact thing, try to beat that time, okay? Or maintain that while keeping my accuracy. You can change it up too. You can go from right to left, whatever you want. You can do two shots if you want. Two shots on one target, then two shots on the next target. You don't have to get too complex and, and too crazy because if you're beginning, you just, you're trying to isolate the two things we're talking about in this week, this week, right? You are trying to lock into a very, very small spot, which is much easier said than done, especially for beginners. And then you're trying to take your foot off the gas when you're about 10 or 20% away from the target and just glide in, okay? So you're gonna use your dry fire mag or maybe, you know, if you don't have a dry fire mag, then just do what, you know, your normal dry fire. You're focusing on your vision and trying to keep your red dot or iron sights right on target. All right, so now we're going to discuss live fire. And if you follow this series, you know that Live fire is essentially a validation of our dry fire. So it doesn't necessarily have to be different. The difference is in the recoil management, right? That now we're gonna have a little explosion happening in our hands. So we're gonna do the same exact thing, and this time progressively do it now with uh, actual rounds. I do not, this is, uh, so this is, I've adjusted this red dot. I do not know if it is exactly zeroed. So if it were paper targets, I know I'll be hitting. I'm not sure about these steel plates, but we're, we'll see if I'm zeroed enough to hit the, the targets. So we're gonna start off with just hitting one plate, okay? And you can do any target array 
on your own. You might not have access to these plates, okay? But this is just easier for you to see. So two things I'm focusing on, my lock bar session, lock in on a small spot with my eyes, and then make sure I'm driving the gun, but letting up 10 to 20% of the way and just glide towards that next target. So here we go. I'm gonna start on target. Okay, so my baseline is 0.92. I decided to take two shots, but if you are starting, just take one shot and then get your red dot or your iron sights on that second target. If you're doing that consistently, then you can move on to what I just did and take that second shot, okay? So that was a 0.92 as I mentioned, and if I wanted to be consistent here, I would put up those two end plates again, just to see if I have the same exact time. But the idea is I know 0.92, I would try to beat that consistently and still get my hits, okay? And this is where the timer is very important. Once you have done two iterations where you're doing one target, you move to the next target without breaking your shot on that second target, just making sure your sights are there, then you do the second variation, which we just did, two shots, then you can mix it up. You could do two shots on one side, maybe have one target over there and another target over there, so you're doing four shots. I am essentially just gonna be using four plates here, but the idea would be this, okay? These are considered four separate targets, but I'm treating them as two, these plate racks as two different targets. So it'd be something like this here. So this is, if you're a little bit more advanced, Okay, so I'm not sure, I didn't call that shot. I, I heard a ding, may have hit the bottom of the rack or maybe hit the edge of that plate, but that's the idea here. Two shots, two shots, and then you progress. Okay, but the whole idea here is you're following. I know it's great to, let me backtrack there. I know it's great to look at the targets. It's cool to shoot. And if you're shooting steel plates, you know, hearing that ding and all that, but the focus, just like we talked about in other, all of our lessons is, on what we just covered this session, and you need to realize that everything, all the learning is happening right here. The hitting the target is just a validation, okay, if you're, that you're doing it correctly, all right? So what you wanna do is take your time and not just throw bullets down range. Now you have to, after each rep, you're thinking, did I do everything correctly? Did I lead with my eyes? Did I reset and prep? Did I lock into a spot? Also, did I follow that 90-10 or 80-20 principle where I really was quick for the first 90 or 80%, then just glide to the next target, the last 10 to 20%. So that's very important. You need to understand and validate, put that in your checklist after each rep. Now, if you're very advanced, then do this from the holster. You can even add movement to it. So when the holster, I'm, I'm not wearing a holster right now, but it'd be very simple. You do the same exact thing and you can go one shot to just the transition, then one shot to one shot, then two shots, two shots, so on and so forth. And you can even move into it. You might move in, do one shot, then the next shot. Okay, something like that because the movement and the draw will add some complexity to the drill and it might confuse you because you might be preoccupied with that rather than focusing on the lessons at hand. But it's a good thing because it is trying to or it is testing your focus and when you're ready for it, actually adding those challenges are a good thing. But if you're just starting out, take baby steps. So that wraps up this week's dry fire and live fire session. There's a whole lot more to cover when it comes to multiple target engagements. Right now we focus on some key concepts when it's, we're talking about our eyes and kind of driving to the next target, preparing to shoot when you arrive on the next target, but we haven't discussed what our, what, you know, what's our body doing? Are there efficient ways to do this? How do we turn our hips? Do we use our knees? So on and so forth. Should we be tense? Should we be relaxed? And that's all coming up in the following weeks. All of those combined are going to really make your multiple target engagements much faster and you'll be more accurate. So make sure you look out for those videos in the coming weeks because it will help gel everything that you've learned thus far. And everything you've learned thus far is something that you're not going to master quickly. It's not something that will happen overnight. It's not something that will happen in weeks. It takes months, sometimes for some people, years, and you truly will never really master it. You'll become more proficient. But give it some time, really do practice it, and it will become instinctive and you know, you know, just part of your nature the more and more you do this. And then it'll be easier to combine all the other little things that we're going to be sharing with you in coming weeks. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys liked the video. As always, please give us a thumbs up if you liked the video, you got some value from it. Let us know what you think in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. See you guys next week.